Hey everyone, it's Val, uh, also known as Tricky Crayon. I saw that the LuLaRoe video that I made back in March started getting a lot of attention, and so I wanted to kind of um, do a video, maybe two, we'll see how long this goes, um, around LuLaRoe, around multi-level marketing in general. The first thing that I wanna do is talk a little bit about multi-level marketing in general. Um, this isn't something that I'm an expert on, it's just something that I've known about for a long time and um, this is and kind of have certain impressions of based on um, what I've known about it. I think the, the, the biggest, oldest sort of multi-level marketing thing that every one of us can think of is Tupperware. Um, but with Tupperware, you were at least getting a good product. It was something that multi-level marketing was employed to sell, um, but it isn't something that sort of needs it the way that a lot of these companies do that make low cost items and then they sell it through um, MLM schemes. Now, Tupperware is still around. I have a friend who sells it. Um, and I would expect that nowadays the quality has probably gone down to maximize profits. Um, but back in the day, old school Tupperware was kind of the like biggest one that you've heard of and can think of as a multi-level marketing company. Um, the first one that I had personal experience with is Athena's Home Novelties, which is a sex toy party company. Um, a consultant comes to your house, brings their stock, does a presentation, plays a few games with you, um, and you and all your friends can buy sex toys at a party in your house instead of having to go online and guesstimate what you might want or go to a sex store if that's something that makes you nervous. Don't be nervous about it. We all have needs. Just go take care of them if you need to. Um, but <laughs> I, I liked Athena's because it was sort of one of those things that helped women engage with their sexuality a little bit more. Um, and so I went to a few parties when my friends had them. Um, and I hosted a few um, in my own home. I hosted them for, I want to say, three or four years in a row. Um, I had Athena's parties with one of the hosts that I had met, um, one of the consultants that I had met at one of my friend's parties. And she is great. I thought she ran wonderful parties. Um, she was a really nice person, very vibrant, um, very inclusive. So for me, one of the things that I liked about having her around was these parties were not just about pleasing your man or spicing up your heterosexual relationship. There was a lot of emphasis on um, the fact that other folks exist and have other needs and we have these products that they might like and things like that. So I really liked this consultant, um, but there were a few different things that kind of rubbed me the wrong way about Athena's. Um, one is that I would get products that were clearly products of a certain company, a certain brand um, and a certain style that had been taken out of their packaging and repackaged. So I had got items that were packaged in um, plastic bags sometimes. Sometimes I got them in those drawstring mesh bags. Um, and to me, especially with sex toys, I want that to be something that's in its original packaging so I have all of the information on materials. I know how to take care of it. Um, that's something that's really important, especially in high quality sex toys. You want to be able to know how to care for them. And it's not something that is great when they're repackaged often without their instructions or with new Athena's branded instructions. The other thing that always rubbed me the wrong way is that um, this person was wonderful, but always tried to recruit me because I'm pretty outspoken. I'm pretty... Um, pretty outgoing. I have, it's easy for me to talk about sex. I'm pretty hard to sort of ruffle in that way. And so she often tried to recruit me. And every time, as much as I liked her, I could never do it. I couldn't bring myself to do it because I understood that part of your job was not just having these parties and showing people sex toys and ways to spice up their sex lives and all of that, but also that you were expected to be selling the company to these people as consumers and to your hostesses to see if you could recruit them into the company. I'm not in sales. I'm not in recruiting. I don't like to have to do that kind of thing. I am happy to talk at length about how cool the product that I'm working with is. Um, I'm happy to help people in sales in my own sort of work life, but I am not the kind of person who likes to sit there and try to convince people to buy things. Um, 
with Athena's, it was at least more the direct selling during the parties was at least more relaxed and like, here's a cool thing you might like, not as much like you have to buy this thing. There were some pressures there. The, you know, if you get X amount, then um, if you buy X amount, then you get a discount or, oh, we have to hit this much at this party for the hostess to get a hundred dollars of free items or whatever it might be. But to me, the recruiting stuff seemed shady, um, especially knowing that team size mattered. So if I recruited more people, I got paid more. Okay, well, if an item costs $5 and I sell it and I'm on Jenna's team and her boss is Brenda and above her is Susan and above her is Abigail and then that's the whole regional VP or something or whatever, whoever that all rolls up to into the company. What happens with the profit there? If the company is gonna make any profit, then that means that each of those people below the company is gonna make less and less profit. So if you're in a situation like that where it's all about that sort of uh, the revenue traveling upstream, um, it feels like A, you're gonna have to really overprice products uh, to, to make it worth it basically to be able to turn a profit at all. And B, the person who's doing that work isn't necessarily getting their fair share. They're not actually getting the full payment for that product. They're making a fraction of it because a fraction, you know, another fraction and another fraction and another fraction all has to travel upstream um, all the way up to the company itself and their revenues. So something about that always just sort of sat wrong with me and I never ended up joining up with Athena's. I had a friend who got into those, um, wraps for your body that are supposed to make you skinnier or whatever. Um, I had friends get into Jamberry. I've had friends get into, um, there's some jewelry company that's also, it's, it's really low quality, crappy jewelry and it's a really overpriced. Like I had a friend of a friend who had one of these jewelry businesses and I bought a bunch of stuff to help her out and it is garbage. It is it's not even regular costume jewelry bad. It's like, it feels plasticky. It's, it, it, it's so lightweight. Anyway, my point here is I've had friends who've done all of the different MLMs that are out there. One of the bigger ones now are um, unique and beauty, what are all the different beauty ones. Um, and for me, I always look at it and I'm, I end up a little bit sad because the folks who start these businesses, the folks who join these businesses, um, they get convinced by their friend who says, oh, it's so great, who's only been in it for three months because her friend convinced her. You'll note that I'm saying her because these companies mainly prey on women. Um, she heard from her friend, it'll be so great. She's been there for three months. Well, it'll be great if you recruit people. All of this stuff happens where, um, before you even make a profit, you're already supposed to be recruiting people saying, oh yeah, well I know so-and-so did a really, you know, has a really great business and makes all this money. They're usually women who are lower income because the way these companies market themselves is a way for women to have a business that allows them to have more financial freedom, more money for their kids, more money for a vacation, whatever it is. Um, and it's, it's marketed as a way sort of to economic freedom for a lot of women. And that's not what it ends up bearing out to be. Uh, someone commented on my LuLaRoe video that the minimum buy-in is $5,000 for LuLaRoe. $5,000 is a lot of money uh, to ask a woman who's usually already struggling to buy into. I'm assuming that's why there are sort of fewer LuLaRoe consultants because um, you can't, just scrape that together. It's not a couple hundred dollars of inventory or it's not, um, Athena's has two models, for example, where one you carry inventory and one you place orders. And, uh, you know, that's a way for people to start if they don't have any capital to begin with to start a business. Um, I just, I don't believe that women are, are throwing $5,000 at this thing because it's going to potentially make them, um, you know, they're hoping that it'll make them a profit. Again, it's usually folks who don't have the most to begin with. 
Um, especially some of the smaller ones. LuLaRoe is very big, um, but especially some of the smaller ones, Jamberry and those, those different jewelry ones or the different um, skincare and beauty companies. It's folks who need more money. Um, I'm fortunate in that I managed to, you know, after my completely ridiculous major in college, I managed to get into tech. Um, and tech is a pretty lucrative industry. There are software as a service startups all over the place, um, especially mostly, you know, mostly in big cities, um, but all over. So if you get into tech, into doing technical customer support, or if you get into some kind of um, coding or product management or project management, there's all kinds of things that you can do, marketing, um, all kinds of things that you can do with these companies. And if you get into tech, it's relatively lucrative. And I'm lucky in that. But I have lots of friends who aren't as lucky. And I always feel terrible when I see them trying to hawk this product that nobody wants, that's overpriced as heck, um, and kind of watching themselves, watching them dig themselves a hole. And the truth of it is that most of my friends who I've seen get into these MLM schemes have since gotten out. I have that one person who does the Athena's parties who I, who I know, um, she's still in it and has been for years. And I think she has the kind of personality that it works well. She's good at selling the product, selling the company. She's, she's vibrant, she's engaging, um, and she's very driven. But most of the people who start something like that, whether it's Jamberry, whether it's jewelry, whether it's beauty products, most of those people, I see them pushing really hard on it for three months or for six months and I'm getting invited to this and that and the other. And then I stop getting invited to things. Um, and I stop seeing them post about it on their profiles all the time because it's not something that long-term ends up being sustainable. As I mentioned in my last video about LuLaRoe, a lot of the LuLaRoe items that I have are from the consultant that I used to purchase from liquidating her business. So she was selling items at five or $10 a piece just to try to get back some kind of money on these garments that just were not saleable effectively. And the big issue that I have with LuLaRoe is they don't make it easy to sell their product. Um, I don't know if it's incompetence that they really decided patterns were their thing and they, you know, they found that patterns were cheaper than buying solid fabrics. I don't know if it's outright malice that they make these things as hard to sell as possible so that the consultants have stock they can't sell because LuLaRoe already has that money because the consultant had to buy the stock. Um, wouldn't surprise me if it was the latter, but I can't say, you know, I cannot say with 100% certainty if they are purposely making things that people can't sell, but it really wouldn't surprise me because of their business model overall. Um, and a lot of the things that I purchased from that friend's liquidation, I'm probably never going to wear. But it was, this is five bucks, this is 10 bucks. If I wear it once, then that's worth it. And the other issue with them is that they have garment quality issues um, and they don't tend to stand by them from what I've heard a lot of the time. Um, returns become really difficult and so on. So with a business model like LuLaRoe, where you have to purchase stock and then try to sell it, and you didn't even really get a choice on that stock, I think, um, again, it seemed like the person who I worked with could say, I want this many Nicoles and this many Julias or whatever it was, um, and then would get whatever patterns and sizes they gave her. Um, when you're stuck in that situation where you don't know what the patterns are going to look like, so you don't know if anyone's going to want that garment, it doesn't matter to the company because you already paid them as the consultant for that stock. So if you're out $500 because you made a big order and you can't sell any of it, why does LuLaRoe care? It's just kind of depressing to think about and engage with because um, it's, again, mostly women mostly not the most well-off women trying to make a few extra bucks on things like this. And to watch LuLaRoe just screw people over constantly, um, to watch people getting out of this business and throwing stuff away that was a $50 dress for 10 bucks, um, it's just unacceptable. And the sad part to me is that pyramid schemes are illegal. But multi-level marketing isn't. The other day I was actually looking at the FTC website um, about pyramid schemes. 
Let me just read you a quick little bit of it. Pyramid schemes promise consumers or investors large profits based primarily on recruiting others to join their program, not based on profits from any real investment or real sale of goods to the public. Some of them may purport to sell a product, but they often simply use the product to hide their pyramid structure. There are two telltale signs that a product is simply being used to disguise a pyramid scheme, inventory loading and a lack of retail sales. Inventory loading occurs when a company's incentive program forces recruits to buy more products than they could ever sell, often at inflated prices. If this occurs throughout the company's distribution system, the people at the top of the pyramid reap substantial profits even though little or no product moves to market. The people at the bottom make excessive payments for inventory that simply accumulates in their basements. Does this sound familiar to you? Let's, let's just go over that again. Inventory loading is when a company basically forces their consultants to buy a lot of stock, more than they're ever gonna be able to sell, meaning that the company makes a lot of money and the individual does not and just accumulates product. So pyramid schemes can involve product. It just has to be product that is hard to sell and is going to accumulate in your home and is going to mean profits for the company, not the individual consultant. Does that sound like LuLaRoe to you? Because it sounds like LuLaRoe to me, not a lawyer at all. But to me, when you talk about this, this issue where pyramid schemes are either no product or product that is hard or impossible to sell, where you have to, because of incentivizing, buy a bunch of stock to sell that you're never going to be able to sell, that to me says LuLaRoe. That's what they do. They load you up with garbage product with crappy patterns and crappy fit that you can't sell, but they don't care because they've made their money already by selling it to you. Um, to me, if you think pyramid schemes are bad, you should also think that MLM is bad. Um, and again, it's because it's predatory. The problem isn't that selling things to your friends is inherently a bad way to do business. The problem is that the company is being predatory towards the people who it's claiming are its sort of employees. The issue is the predatory nature of the company. The issue is an executive board that is making a crap ton of money by selling people things that they can't then resell. It's illegal as a pyramid scheme. MLM is currently legal. I honestly hope that we get some consumer protections in place and, and we get rid of companies like LuLaRoe um, because they're everywhere. They're all over the place and they just take advantage of women. Um, but effectively, again, if you think a pyramid scheme is bad, if you think a Ponzi scheme is bad, if you remember Bernie Madoff and how everyone hated that guy, you should really hate LuLaRoe too. Um, and my way of sort of dealing with this is I've just stopped buying. I didn't look for another consultant when mine got out of the business. And I said, if I buy any more, it's going to be secondhand or it's going to be from consultants who are looking to get out of it. So I can at least help them get some money back out of this dumpster fire of a company. So to me, for so many different reasons, you know, I noted the quality reasons in earlier videos. Um, I noted the cost reasons in earlier videos, but the biggest reason for me is LuLaRoe screws over women and you shouldn't support that company. So just don't buy from them and eventually they're gonna die off. Um, or if enough of those lawsuits go through, hopefully that'll uh, kind of end it as well. If you have any questions, um, more specifics that you want on other MLMs or anything like that, just leave a comment below. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.